This is Drive to the Draft, presented by Kia. Movement that inspires. All right, this is the man now. This is the athletic freak of this group. 41 inch vertical, his tape is silky smooth. He is dynamic, he's long, he's six two and a half, another one of those huge corners. But unlike Julius Brents, he has better production in college. He matches up well with receivers, really fluid, fluid hips. I mean, he's a guy that's fun to watch. You know, we saw him walking around the hotel the other day and he is a big, well put together guy. I think he's gonna run fast here, we'll see. Um, working that setup, getting everything right, nice and relaxed. You can tell he's got that track background with the way the head's hanging there. Let's see what he does here. Oh, nice and smooth. That looked smooth for him. Let's see what we got here on the unofficial time. 4-4, four, 4-3-4, four. Four, four, excuse me. So that's a nice time, great time for him. And I think he's just secured himself as a top 10 pick with that. 6-2, 4-3-4. I mean, doesn't get much better than that. All right, Christian Gonzalez back up for his second run. This is the guy that will be in that top 10. If he were to fall for, to Washington at 16, I think they absolutely sprint that, uh, that card up. They get, you know, they get Terry McLaurin in there in that draft room and have him run the card up because he's a really good football player. Told you, saw him walking around the hotel the other day. He is a big, good looking son of a gun. Ran a 4-4 the first time, 4-4-4 the first time. Obviously unofficial time, but if he comes in with something a little bit, that's a great time for him. But if he comes in with something faster, like he's definitely going to secure that spot. Um, but tall guy is hard for them to run fast. Oh, didn't like that one. Kind of check it out. Walk back. It's so funny being in that starting position, how much tension you have to have on your first on your front hand, and it's very, very uncomfortable. We talked about that in our 40 demo the other day. Just you got to be used to that, to being uncomfortable in that position just for a little bit longer than you want to. Um, let's see what he does here. Kind of get yourself psyched back up. Take a deep breath. Reapproach the line. I mean, his frame is something that makes him so special. It, it's his frame, and it's also his ability to just turn and flip his hips open. And you know, there's a guy like Kylie Ringo, for example, who ran a faster 40, but is never in phase. Always a little late. And Christian Gonzalez is like the opposite of that. Right in phase, doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Just looks the part. Great feel for the position. Let's see if he can take a hundredth of a second, um, tenth of a second off that time would be great for him, obviously. Getting that hips up, hold that position, get out of there. A little bit better start for him. Let's see what he says. He's obviously going to finish that race. And then he gets that 4-3-8. So that's exactly what he needed to do. A guy that's just checking boxes with the measurements, with the jumps, with the run. That's exactly what this is about, is just confirming what you see on tape, and he's doing that with every event today. All right, now here, kind of the man of the hour for Washington, Joey Porter Jr., big guy. Again, I know I've said that a lot, 6'2", 205, long arms. Kind of reminds me of like a praying mantis, right? These long kind of strikes on this receiver, more of a press man corner, so not a perfect scheme fit, but you see him getting mocked to Washington a lot and it's because he is a tall physical very unique specimen and like all the top top corners who have come before the tall corners who have run before how's he gonna run let's see how this starts. that looks pretty smooth I don't know let's see what this time is 446 which is great for him for a man of that size that's outstanding and I think that kind of time is just gonna secure his spot it's one of those top three guys he did an excellent job with that and um, Good for him, and he's a guy that could very well be guarding Jahan Dotson in practice again like he did in college at Penn State. Nice to see that rivalry for Washington. All right, Steve Avila from Texas Christian. Uh, he is a fun football player to watch because he's a big man. I think he listed 335 pounds, 6'4", and he just walks around big. He doesn't look like a, like a fat guy. He's got a nice, good build, build on him, but his feet are excellent, and I love guards with nice, athletic twitchy feet. It allows them to kind of burst to the second level, create power in a short area quickness. Um, I think he's pretty twitched up. I think he's going to run okay here. I think that was a pretty good 10 by him. And let's talk about that real quick. I think the 10 for the offensive lineman is probably more significant than the long speed, but I think he showed good athleticism there. Nice twitch, good movement skills. 
keep an eye out for him. He's probably the second guard on my board. All right, Steve Avili from Texas Christian TCU is up. He ran a 5-2-1 the first time, and I guess I kind of expected that because his footwork is so good. It's so quick. Um, again, a huge man, kind of more in that big, hulking, bulking guard. Keeps excellent pockets to TCU. That, I love how he's bursting off the line. Not going to have the top-end mechanics because he's so big, but you love the burst early in that rep. One of those guys at 48 for Washington, you'd be drooling if he fell to you there. Uh, keep an eye out for him. All right, we just saw Anton Harris go. The next guy on the list is Broderick Jones. He, on film, is so incredibly raw. Only 19 start, starts at Georgia, plays left tackle. You can see he's having a hard, like he has a hard time kind of learning how to anchor, but he's so athletic, he's so strong. His best football is ahead of him, and that's why he's a guy at 16 that I think is very, very likely for Washington if he were to slide. He's in that kind of top-tier group right now. Everyone has him as the third-rated tackle in the league. That's a great start by him. Should run a good time here. He's pretty athletic, pretty explosive. That's kind of his calling card. Again, best football ahead of him. Washington at 16 if he does slide to them. All right, Broderick Jones is up for a second 40. Ran a 4.98 on his first run. We talked about uh, Anton Harrison, we talked about Roderick Jones, how they, they are the athletic tackles of this class. They're like that guy you want to be able to play left tackle, the movement in space, all those things. They both have some issues from a strength and kind of technical acumen standpoint. But like I said, you can't coach athleticism, and these guys have it. They, these guys have buckets of it. So I think this guy specifically, just because he went to Georgia, played the best competition every week, is a guy that Washington should keep an eye on at 16. But... He's making himself a lot of money today. And if you don't know who Broderick Jones is, you definitely should after this performance today. All right, Peter Skaronsky, the man of the hour, many people's favorite center, favorite tackle. He's a little bit smaller, 6'4", shorter arm length. But when you watch this film, he is the ultimate technician. Vertical jumped well, broad jumped well. I expect him to run a decent 40 because he is a tremendous athlete. He is a football playing Johnny, can play guard. They brought him in to play center at Northwestern, but after Slater left and got drafted to the Chargers, he became their left tackle and didn't shy, didn't back down from anybody. If, if the commanders have an opportunity to pick him at 16, I think they run that pick in and are overjoyed. You go, all right, Peter Skaronski ran a 5-1-8. I'm sure he's probably not the most stoked about that, but that's a good time. I'd be plenty happy. If I'm his agent, I'm fine with that. His technique on film is flawless gives you some tackle guard flexibility. I personally think he's more of a guard, but we talked with his coach, um, Duke Merriweather, said he thinks he can play tackle just because the footwork's so good, and I think that shows up. Excited to see him in the field work later on. One and go. All right, Osiris Torrance from Florida. Many people have him as the number one rated guard, and when you watch his film, he's not overly twitchy, but what he doesn't do is he doesn't strike out. There's no no-hitters on his tape. He's very consistent. He's consistent in pass protection. He's consistent in the run game. Not a lot of knockouts, not a lot of knockdowns, but the big man, 6'5", 345 pounds, performed excellent at the Senior Bowl, performed excellent, excellent against Jalen Carter um, from Georgia. He'll, be the, he'll probably be the first guard off the board because of that consistent play. And all right, Darnell Wright from Tennessee, who may be my favorite right tackle in this draft. He's big. He's 6'5", 345 pounds, good feet, good athleticism, good understanding of his pass pro angles, but also is nasty in the run game. He absolutely dominated Will Anderson, and I love that. I love his approach. Awesome at the Senior Bowl. Um, I think that's a pretty good time for the big man. You see kind of the lean legs. Keep your – like he is someone that I love. I love him, and if he's available at 16, I think that's a possibility. All right, Luke Whipler from Ohio State. He's probably my third guard. I know some people, the guys at PFF, have him as their second or top-rated guard. He's a little bit smaller than Tippmann, than Schultz, but he moves really well. He pulls. He's decent in pass protection. He's got excellent footwork. I think on the field drills later, he's really going to shine. I'm a little disappointed Tippmann's not doing anything today. He's working out at his pro day because it would have been nice to see Schultz uh, excuse me, Whippler and Tipman all go against each other. But a um, little bit smaller than those guys, which some people don't like. I know some people like the bigger centers for pass protection reasons. But he is an excellent football player. Just think about that Ohio State offensive line. Him, Dewan Jones, um, Paris Johnson, and that's going to be a good time for him, I believe. Yes, nice job. So Whippler, definitely a guy to keep an eye on. Really solid pro. Washington's lucky, man. A lot of good centers in this draft. 
right, just to continue the run of centers, Whipler's back up. He ran a pretty solid time the first time out, 5-1, um, 5-2, something like that. Um, tremendous athlete on film. Love, love his competitive edge, physicality. I think the other thing I like about him, he's very technical. And I feel like he could come in, plug and play right away. And I think that's a good thing for the commanders is there are so many centers in this draft that are close, if not already starting cal caliber NFL starters. So he's one of the bunch. Um, and I think he brings good value probably in the third round for the team. Nolan Smith from Georgia is up. Really undersized guy, probably 6'3", 235, 240-ish type pounds. But he has so much athleticism, former five-star recruit at Georgia, excellent pass rush ability. Missed some games this year due to injury, but gosh, when you watch the film in those pass rushing situations, he does flash dramatically. So again, we've mentioned inside-outside flexibility. Here is a guy that I think brings a little bit of kind of that traditional outside pass rusher. And, um, and again, if you're adding, if you're trying to add pass rush juice, Maybe this guy allows you to bump Chase Young inside a three technique on certain downs. Here we go. Good horizontal projection. Come on. He's out. Kind of like to see him pop up there. Good. Not quite as explosive off the start as I thought he would be, but like the race, and again, the film there is outstanding. Lucas Van Ness is the Superman in this year's draft. Didn't play a whole lot at Iowa. There he goes. He should run really fast here. He's a big man. He's 6'5", 280 pounds with an eight-pack plays with tremendous power and physicality. So he's a guy that I'm sure he ran well right there, will probably be gone when Washington picks even at 16, looking to be a top 10 pick. But I wanted to show him to you, a guy, again, can play defensive tackle, play edge, just overwhelms offensive linemen with his strength. But I think he's also showing here that he's a tremendous athlete as well. All right, Devon A. Chain from Texas A&M is up, and he is supposedly one of the fastest people at the combine this year. 10 100 meter guy, legitimate track speed, and that shows up on tape in a dramatic way. Not the biggest guy in the world. Yeah, nice smooth start. It's going to be a fast time. Excellent run there. Yeah, very fast, explosive play waiting to happen. Not the biggest guy. Some people are concerned about his size, but would be a, a wonderful add for the, for the commanders. Can never have too much speed. Devon A. Chain's back up for his second 40, and he did not disappoint. He ran a 4-3-4. He is absolutely rolling. For a running back, that is tremendously fast. I think he's kind of every opportunity he gets to run is bumping himself up in terms of draft, draft stock. As much as I'd say the commanders should pick him at 48, I, don't, I think the value on running back isn't there at that spot for the commanders. But someone he's going to make some team very happy. Think about what if he went to Miami, having Tyree Kill, him at running back, and then Darren uh, Waddle in the, on the other side. That would be probably the fastest football team in the country. So Jack Charbonnet from UCLA is up right now, and he might be the best, have the best vision of any back in the class. He catches the ball well. He finds the creases, lacks that top end speed. So I'm not really sure what he's going to run here. That's not a bad start. Definitely not as fast as the first two guys. Bigger guy. 6'1", 220 pounds. Uh, he is one of my favorite running backs in the class, not just because he went to UCLA, but because he's a complete back. All right, Zach Charbonnet is back up with his second, his first time. Four, five, six. It was exactly kind of where I thought he'd be. He doesn't flash with his speed. He flashes at all the other elements of the game. He would be an interesting selection for the commanders because he does catch the football well. He does run well, but he kind of feels a very similar mold to what they already have. Can they get a pass catching back that's a game changer? Uh, like Gibbs. Gibbs, like I said, won't be available, but love him. Not sure he's the right fit for the commanders. All right, I think there are going to be some fireworks here with Jameer Gibbs, the running back Alabama. He's getting a lot of Alvin Kamara comps. I personally think he's a little bit more twitchy than that. He's got a little bit better burst. He's just an explosive play waiting to happen. He catches the football well. He reads, runs nicely. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he is a playmaker. He, he's explosive. Just love watching him play. He's very different than the kind of the traditional Alabama bruising running back. To me, this is a perfect iteration of what the commanders are looking for. Now, he won't be there when they're picking. The value for him is going to be too high. Someone's going to pick him high in the second round, probably before they pick at 48. But this is the type of player, this mold, um, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Gray from Oklahoma is another guy, pass catching back, not quite as explosive. That's why he'll be available later, not running today. But Gibbs, 
is kind of the prototype of the modern back. Can you line him up at receiver? Yes. Put him in the slot. Can he beat a linebacker? Absolutely. Here we go. Nice hold it there. That's a pretty smooth race as well. We're going to have some good times today. A lot of fast running backs. Jameer Gibbs is back up from Alabama. We talked about how it was an explosive play waiting to happen, and he did not disappoint. Came out around a 4-4. Let's see if he can get that down. I mean, that would be crazy having all these running backs run four threes. Um, I think he's perfectly capable of it. Very explosive gentleman. Again, probably the, I don't, I don't want to say the most proficient pass catching back because there are so many good ones in this class, but a guy that did it at a big school with a big offense, playing against big opponents every week. Excellent job by him. Very solid football player. All right, Keaton Mitchell from ETS, ET, ECU excuse me, is a, an explosive runner. I mean, he has the fastest clocked GPS time in college football this last year. 23, 24 miles per hour now. Is that number real? He is an explosive play waiting to happen. Love the start. Not sure that's going to – I don't know, man. That's a nice race by him. We'll see. We'll see if him or A-Chain has the fastest 40 time, but a guy that the commander should definitely keep an eye on. Can't get enough speed. We mentioned how Keaton Mitchell has the fastest GPS time on his first run. Crushed it. 4.38. That's the second fastest time for the running back. Obviously, A-Chain with his track background is going to be a little bit more proficient at the start, a little bit more pro proficient at the transition at the 20-yard mark. But this guy, he is so fun to watch in that offense. Shades of Christian Johnson to him, probably because they went to the same school. They wear the same colored jersey, so it's easy to kind of make that comparison but when you see an explosive running back man I just it gets me excited guys who can make people miss guys who can hit home runs guys who can take the screen pass you know 80 yards for a touchdown so this would be an interesting guy because I don't think he's got tremendous value at the moment I think he'd be available maybe in the fourth round this is just such a deep running back class a guy like this could easily fall to you in the fourth maybe even the fifth round just because there's so many talented guys I mean, half the guys aren't even running today, and they're all going to be draftable players. So pretty wild. Let's see. Excellent start. So smooth. Very nice run there. Great to see these explosive guys running. Again, 4-3-8 on the dot. Explosive football player. It's not often at the combine you get to see what everyone agrees is a generational talent at the position. Talked to multiple scouts this week saying this is the highest running back they've evaluated in 20 years, since Adrian Peter Peterson almost. So that is crazy. We're going to get to see him run. He does everything well. He's got excellent vision. He breaks tackles. He catches the football. He's explosive. I'm not sure what he's going to run. I'd say probably in the 4-4s four if I was going to guess. But, man, he is flying right there. Everyone says he's a top five value from a pick standpoint, but when do, you, when do you take a running back? What's the value on the position? He is a special football player.